Well, you know, it's pretty well named. Uh, they, they call it, because it comes from Europe, they say dynamique, but to an American, this is dynamic, and that's a pretty good way to describe this airplane. This is a little scooter. Really gets up and goes. You can tell by, look at these clean lines here. This is really nice execution. Now, what kind of power are we using in this place? This, again, uses the Rotax 912, but you could almost wonder how they got it in. Look at this slim cowl that's on this thing. Just, just everywhere where you look at the dynamic, this is a very clean machine, gear all nicely fared. Now there is a retractable version of this available in kit, and that's the one I flew earlier, but here's the one that's SLSA approved, straight leg gear, but all nicely fared in, and just cleanly executed throughout. What, do you, what can't you love about this airplane? Now, the steering, does it have a steerable nose wheel? Steerable nose wheel, and uh, conventional controls inside. Why don't we hop inside and have a look? Uh, called winglets and you know what They're, we've only got a couple of designs in the LSA uh, space that use this the Gobosh also has them but a lot of people look at this and you know how effective these are is not as important as how good they are for marketing because people love the look of the of the winglet but again as you come around here with your camera you sight down this wing I mean I can see it better than the camera can I know but that is a clean smooth surface the little bumps you see on it are a couple of drops of rain from earlier otherwise this thing is slick as a whistle ailerons way out here at the end and they're, they look kind of small but they're very effective because of where they're placed out here but look at these flaps they just kind of go on and on and on and on that slows this airplane down real well it's a fast airplane we talked about that a moment ago it also slows down real well and there's a lot of the reason right there kind of look like I'm in a convertible here or something well not quite just how you get in the airplane but step up on the wing that part's pretty straightforward any of them but then it's got a nice big and very solid surface here that you can put your full weight on you don't want to grab onto the panel that's not structural but the back here this is like a roll cage this is sturdy as it gets but here's easy you sit you stand on the seat pretty typical entry for a low wing sit on the back here get yourself comfortable and then just slide down into position not much, not much harder than that. And boy, once you get in here, that convertible comment you made, or that sports car comment you made, this has got it here. This feels really nice and comfortable. Look at the proximity of the controls here. Very, everything within an easy reach. This beautiful little panel with the uh, carbon fiber accent on it. I mean, what's not to love? This is a pretty little airplane, Dave. So you got uh, dual controls on it. Full dual controls right here. And so, I, you know, I always like an airplane where you can rest your hand on your leg now you can just sort of make little finger motions and that's really all you have to do it's not super duper light but it's a very easy flying airplane and because it flies quickly you don't want to be waving this thing around so a nice way to just so uh, i've flown it before just use fingertip controls like i'm showing right now well flaps are right here in the middle so both guys can reach them real easy you see underneath here where i'm kind of showing you with my fingers there's a little button down there and if you see here there's some detents in this track so as you grip it, try and move my hand a little exaggerated, pull up here, and then you can pull back and you can release then, and it's gonna pop, you heard it very clearly, right into where you want it. Pull up again, next notch, and the third notch of flaps. And as we saw earlier, that gets them way down there. So that's a nice, easy moving control. That's not hard to do at all. And uh, obviously either side can do it easily. For trim, we've got a nice little, uh, the green, and they've got them all color coded here. That's kind of nice and it's a tensioner system so watch the stick here as I move this and you'll see that the stick moves along with this this is a common system also it's a bungee loaded system and uh, their pilot Jim says this works really well now how was the throttle uh, located? Throttle is this great big knob here in the middle. The reason why it's so big is this is what's called a vernier or a pre very precise control which you can either twist. I won't move it too far because I don't want to ag uh, aggravate the engine. Or I'm going to use both hands here. You don't have to, but just so you can see what's going on. Push in and then you can move the throttle back and forth easily to full range. 
but if you just want to make small adjustments, which is common when you're flying along and you go, well, I'm at uh, whatever RPM and I want just 100 more, just twist a little bit. And then that also stays in position real nice so that it doesn't tend to creep on you. Now we're down in Florida and it's pretty hot down here. Is there ventilation through this cabin now? Got pretty good ventilation down here, green. You know, that uh, kind of makes sense to me too. Cabin heating over here, that's the black knob. Carburetor heat in the middle and you notice it's a different shape, which is a nice thing so you, you can just feel what you're doing without having to look. That's a nice feature, comes out of regular general aviation airplanes. On the left is a ventilation system. You've got both the Mechaplex sliding glass here, which you could probably pop open a little bit, but right up here you've got this little control, a uh, uh, little air vent, and they're on both sides, and these usually allow you to adjust them somewhat, and this would be the supply for that. So pull that full open, probably get lots of air in here. Performance-wise, where does this fit into the range of light sports? Well, this is going to be one of our performers, Dave. This guy is going to go right close or almost at the 120 knot limit. In fact, it can be a little higher than that at altitude because of density, altitude, and so forth. Uh, but this one will easily run right flat out. This, uh, the cleanliness of the wing, that's always important. You know, power is, a, of course, a part of making an airplane fly fast. The other part. Arguably the more important part is the smoothness and cleanliness of the wing and fuselage and uh, there's not much to compare with the dynamic this way. Now, has this airplane been out on the market now for a while then? This has. It's been in Europe for many years actually. There's quite a few of them flying in Europe and it's been in this country here as a kit which was then either retractable or eventually straight-legged as a kit. But now they're doing, they've got uh, for some time now, they've had uh, SLSA approval so you can buy this one fully equipped, ready to fly and you see here the panel layout hardly a round, in fact there's not a round gauge in sight, the only round gauges we've got here aren't gauges at all, they're radio equipment. Uh, the intercom and the uh, trans uh, transceiver. Uh, in the center here we've got our GPS system, this is the, they use the AVMAP one, and I can see this pops out very easily here. And then on each side we have their very common uh, Dynon 100, D100, and D120, which displays all of the information you need, can be switched back and forth, can be split screen and uh, everything you need to know is contained in these but it makes a nice clean finish and even to the marketing side of it i kind of like this orange accent which they've carried through in the seats here we pull back here we'll get to see these seats but but look a little more carefully here and you'll see they've got nice side bolsters and that's true on the seat back as well so once you're sitting in here this is a nice comfortable airplane to sit in i could fly in this airplane for a few hours and maybe i'll get to someday a lot of storage room in behind the seat as well. Yeah, we look over my shoulder here. It not only goes back a little ways, it goes down quite a ways here. I, I can I can reach the bottom, but I've got to do something to get back there. So that's nice. You can carry some goods with you. And when you're wearing headsets like we all do, they plug in right back here. So you don't have wires dangling all over the front of the cockpit. You just pull them over the back and uh, put your headset on and fire the engine up and go. And who are these airplanes happening in the country? Well, they're imported from Europe. This is a European design. As I said, there's a lot of them flying in Europe. And now it's being brought in by uh, some folks that have a lot of experience in the LSA space. And they're coming in under the name, and you can find information about at dynamicaero.com. That's dynamic, just spelled in the classical way, A-E-R-O.com. And do you have a flight report on this one? I do. I got to fly the retractable one. I'm uh, looking for my first flight on the straight leg guy, but the retractable one's available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.